Hello and welcome back to the Lego Millennium Falcon Mega Build project. We're on page 397. More importantly, we're on step 1111. 1111. We're actually not. I've just left it there. Or am I? Where am I? I'm down there, I think. I'll assume I've finished this, this step and move forward. I was supposed to attach these before this video started. And I just I haven't. I'll get to it eventually. I don't. I think nothing relies on those being in place. Oh, I put the sticker on. That's how I ended. Yes, that was a big factor. Actually, not even remotely on this page. Don't even need this. I'm building a new thing. We'll build our own Millennium Falcon. Blackjack and hookers. Uh, let's see. So that lines up. Just there. Ah, that's good. Nice. So, it's been a pretty good week, I feel. I don't base that on anything. Actually, it's been an annoying week for me. I, uh, I've been playing God of War, and I finished it. Which is something I'm now trying to do, is, is properly finish games, which it happens all the time where I'll, I'll be in a phase where it's like, all right, I'm going to play this game, I'm going to finish it. Not not going to worry about 100% in it, but I'm going to get to the end of the story and most of the do most of the side stuff. And God of War, I was loving it. Great game, really good. Enjoying all the side quests, all the, all the storytelling, the gameplay is a lot of fun. Exploration is not so much fun, or not so much exploration as the map is kind of a pain in the ass. in as much as it's kind of an open world, but, but not open. It's, um, it's kind of hard to describe. If you've played it, you'll know what I mean, or you won't. It's hard to say. I'm not being very clear, am I? Uh, yeah, I was I was really enjoying it. I was like, okay, I think I'm gonna go ahead, and I I I wasn't like certain on this one, but I was pretty sure I was at a point in the story where, like, do one more thing and you'll basically be at the end of the game. I I had that feeling. The game may have told me this, and that might be why I had that feeling. But I I was I was sort of at that point, and I, I pushed forward. To, to what did in fact turn out to be the end of the game. And it was like the biggest letdown ever. It's When I was playing it, I, I actually, I, I was voting in like the Golden Joystick Awards, as I do every year. And as I do every year, there's like, there's like may, say there's 20 categories, there's maybe five that I have a valuable opinion on, another five that I've got a rough idea on, and then a further 10 where it's like, I don't know, best mobile game. I'll give it to this one. I've heard of it at least. <laughs> Whereas what you're supposed to do is just not vote in categories you have no idea on. But that's that's not how democracy works, is it? In a democracy, you vote on the things you know about and then the things you don't know about. You still vote and you vote based on arbitrary reasons. This guy has a cool name. He'll get my vote. He sounds funny. He can have my vote. That's... Uh, that's, that's the system, isn't it? It's terrible for everything. Shouldn't do it. We all do it, though, don't we? It's the best. Uh, yeah. yeah, so my, my thinking was, oh, yeah, definite definite game of the year contender. Um, just the, the way the storytelling is, the gameplay's great. It's all great. And and I was, and I'd, I'd sort of noticed that it wasn't like... It wasn't a, like a, what's it called, um, a slam dunk for most people. Like it, People were liking it, but I feel like after it came out, there was no like continued love, if you will. Which I thought, you know, maybe, maybe it's just that people aren't talking about it anymore. That's fine. It has been out a while. That's certainly possible. Yeah. And then I, then I got to the end and I... The way that game ends, 
is it's like it's it's clearly unfinished honestly like this the story ends at like the halfway point of a film it's almost like you're playing a trilogy and you've you've played very clearly the first or the, or the first two parts and it's like this story has no conclusion it is just setting up to something it's this is like step one of three and it had no real climax um but it's still a great game annoyingly it's uh i'm missing a piece no i've got the piece i just never attached it because it's hidden away somewhere like this I do apologise about that. I I didn't realise that I'd I'd left a fresh old batch of milkshake in the kitchen because apparently it has brought all the boys to the yard. It was actually only like a thirty second delay, and then I took twenty minutes to write that uh, reintroduction line. I don't think it was worth it, honestly. It wasn't strong, wasn't powerful, unlike my milkshake. So I was talking about God of War, wasn't I? Uh, how when you're playing it, it's like, yeah, this is the best game ever, definite game of the year. And then just just finishing the story just left me on such a sour note, particularly because, like, throughout the whole thing, they've been teasing, like... Okay, there's probably going to be some spoilers coming up here. Um, it's Norse mythology. Obviously, I've got, like, a hair in my eye. It's an eyebrow. It, it's my actual eyebrow, in fact. So it's Norse mythology, right? They're not they're not setting it up at the start that like you're out to kill Odin. That's that's not it. It's not like in, in God of War where you're out to kill Ares and then you're out to kill Zeus and then I think you're out to kill Zeus again because he failed the sec in the second game. I forget I think there was some fates. You're out to change fate, I think, in the second one. I'm trying to remember God of War is difficult. It all sort of blends together after a while. Uh, so it's, it's, it's Norse mythology. They, te they tease Odin a lot. I was like, y you're not fighting Odin in this game. That's, that's too much. But also Thor was a big factor. I'm like, you're probably going to fight Thor towards the end. That's like a solid matchup for you. Particularly because the god that's following you around a lot is, is Boulder. B Boulder. Who's been sent by Odin to track you down, roughly. Um... And you fight him at the start of the game, and you win. You can't, it's implied you kill him, but then he, it turns out he can't die, so you don't actually end up killing him. Um, okay, so this bit... It's supposed to fit on, but it doesn't actually fit together all that well. And now I need to add it to the l left side. Obviously, it's the left side. You always add everything to the left first. Over here. And how does it clip in? Oh, right. This bit hooks into... Here. Oh, that was easy. Yeah, so you fight Boulder at the start and you beat him. And then later on, like you see, you see Boulder and like his two cronies, his two sons, I think they actually are, who are weaker than him. Are they his sons or his nephews? There's some relation. They're either four son, four's sons or his sons. I forget. It doesn't really matter. But you beat both of them as well, and then you you fight Boulder again later, and you think, okay, he's he's done for now. He's finally done it, and you think it's it's gonna it's gonna escalate to like a bigger fight. And it doesn't, like, the, the end boss battle is just against Boulder, again. And it's kind of a disappointing battle, to be honest. I think that was my main issue with it. It's like, a big part of God of War is the combat. And, like, throughout the whole game, there's not really, like, any big set-piece giant fights, which is odd, given how giants are a big factor in Norse mythology. I can kind of understand it from the point of view where a lot of those big fights in, in God of War tended to be kill a few minions, damage an arm, do a quick time event. And it was sort of samey and didn't require a different skill to regular combat. But at the same time, God, it looked epic though, didn't it? 
It just left. It just left me like. It, it left me wanting more. I suppose was the issue. It felt unresolved. Which sound, it sounds like a like whiny. Like the game was, the game was plenty long enough, but also it didn't tell a complete story particularly. It was, it was very much the prologue of the story. Right. So that's right. That's like that. Right. Sorry. Sorry. I just need some new pieces now. It was, it was like, it was a great game, you know, but it just, just left you sort of a bit, slightly bitter at the end. And then, then at the end they do that thing of saying, all right, so now, you know, get, game's over, but you know, you, you're still here. If you want to go and complete like all the side quests, that's fine. I'd, I'd actually done nearly all of them anyway. Um, there's not actually that many. What it is, is there's sort of, there's one quest chain that's given by the two dwarves that run the shop. That's, that's sort of the, the main one, I would say. And like, there's, I don't know, about six in that chain. You have to do, you have to do them sort of in order. But it's, it's, it's two lots of two, then, then a one, then a one, I, I think, if memory serves. That's fine. And then there's also, um, there's some quests like around the main hub that are, they're pretty much just fetch quests. You meet a ghost and they're like, oh, I can't move on until until these three enemies have been killed. Or, oh, I can't move on until these six braziers have been lit. They're still good. They're enjoyable. They're well written. They're voice acted. Um, but they don't, and and then, then there's a, a few that are clearly like post game quests. Like, oh yeah, okay. defeat the, the do these six challenges. The first five are doable. The last one you need to be, you need to have like high level armor to be able to even attempt it and all that jazz. But it's just such a pain in the ass to like, to get to them. Like you've got to, you got to go to this place. You, you can quick travel to this place. Then you've got to wait for a weird cutscene to get here. Then you can quick travel in this other place. And it's just, it just makes it that little bit more annoying. Ah. That's that's the other thing that annoys me. The world tree that you use for like traveling between the realms, which is a cool, if slightly confusing idea. Like on the menu for that, it clearly shows you all of the nine realms. So there's a definite vibe like at the start of the game when you go to the after you go to the first realm. It's like okay, so the the main hub world is like the biggest one and it's got a lot of the exploring and stuff. But we're also going to travel to these other worlds, and that's how you're going to, you know, add a bit of variety and and what have you. And then as 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 you're playing, like you you unlock like two of them, and they're like optional realms, which is cool. I like that. And then it it quickly becomes apparent that oh, we're not going to go to these nine realms at all. I can understand not going to Asgard, as that's you know very. Right? Basically, the quest is to get to Jotunheim, one of the nine realms. My my assumption was, in a kind of zelda style, that you would finally get to Jotunheim and then find out very much the case that, oh, this is the halfway point of the game. It's sort of, I was prepared for that, and then, then very much no. It was like, actually, no, this is just the, this is the end of the game. And when you get here, there's there's nothing here either. It's not like... It's not a whole new realm to explore with loads of cool shit in it. It's very much a straight line path that you walk down and there's no, it's not, it's almost, it's basically a cutscene that you're playing. You can't, you can't, there's no enemies to fight. You can't get your weapons out. You can't do any like the normal stuff. So it, it pretty much tells you about telling you, oh, there's no actual, there's no, there's no gameplay here or anything. There's nothing to do here. You're just here to slowly walk towards the end of the game. And they kind of shot themselves in the foot by doing that whole thing where the game has no no loading screen, but it doesn't have no loading screens. It's got no cutscenes. It's got no, uh, it's like one continuous shot. That's what they call it, isn't it? 
which is great, but it means any time where you're not like moving, essentially, you sit there and think, so they're hiding a loading screen here. Uh, oh, so this is hiding the loading. And it, it's just, it somehow takes away from the impressive thing they've built. Particularly egregious is the quick travel system where you, you go, you find, there's these portals around the world, you use them, turns into a door, you, you have to walk along this tree branch and a portal will appear. But it's clear that it's just loading in. So you're in this little loading section for say it's 30 seconds. You can, you can leg it for 30 seconds and the door will appear at the end, or you can not move at all and the door will appear right in front of you. And it's just, it's, it's oddly aggravating. Once you, once you can see the trick, which I'm assuming exists, it might not, it just, it infuriates you. That being said, it is a great game. It's just really annoying. It's... I sound like such a whiny asshole saying this sort of thing as well, because it, it probably is the game of the year. So far, a lot of people are saying Red Dead will be better. I'm not so sure about Red Dead 2. It's Red Dead 2 I'm talking about, obviously, because I've got very sour memories of the first one. So I remember playing a lot of Red Dead 1, because it was, it was a big game. I remember enjoying certain elements of it, but I... I, was, I didn't, I never bought like the, oh yeah, it's like a, it's like a living world. There's, there's all kinds of hunting and shit and it's like, oh, it's, it's, it's all, it's all there. For me, it was more like, this is okay. It takes a long time to get anywhere. And I felt like most of the gameplay was you do a mission. Great. The missions were always fun. And then your next mission, the starting point for that is like across the other side of the map. You can kind of quick travel, but not really. So you're going to spend about 20 minutes riding your horse there. And to be honest, riding a horse is just boring. Right? It was, I never particularly enjoyed it. Whereas in GTA, I feel like you'll always be driving to a mission and be like distracted by a hundred things. This is so hard to get on because you can't, I can't push it against anything. Damn it. Why did you put it on the right way? Yeah, I am. How does... There's, there's nothing to get purchased against. Ah, I'll leave it for now. I'll, I'll continue to leave it as well, I'll do. Right, so... Weirdly, this is it. I've just got to put this little last bit on. And it goes... In this space here, this bit towards, yes, but what does it connect to? In fact, it doesn't, it just sits in there. It's quite pleasing actually, so if you want to look in, you can take that bit off, and but you can pretty much just pick this bit up. That just, that just sits on. rather disconcerting there's a lot of big pieces just sort of left i'm pretty sure i must have missed some things might might have to do it once over the next section is is the uh cabin cockpit that's what it's called cabin yes yeah, so um i'm cautious about red dead 2. i suppose it has been a while since the first one hasn't it Ah, this could be it. Ah, yes, I now see what the issue is between these two. Um, it's fairly obvious when you look in hindsight. Um, this one, nicely rounded, fully formed. Uh, this one, I clearly missed out large sections of the sides. I wonder how easy this will be. I think it'll be quite easy. I think this is the one where it said, right, that's great, you've made that, now make it again. Um, all right. I probably should just start over, but I don't want to. In fact, this is the exact step I need to do again. But this bit goes somewhere and I don't know where. 
Uh, ah, there we go. I was looking at it the wrong way. That's helped enormously. Let's see, I think I've seen two films since I last did one of these. A Star is Born and Venom. Kind of different ends of the cinema spectrum there, isn't it? I reckon I just skipped out an entire step because it's pretty much all of the major pieces I've got left is this step. Which is good, but also fairly worrying. So I'll start with A Star is Born as it was the one I saw first. Oh, two of these. So apparently it's a remake of of like a film that has now been remade four times. It's, I assume it's the female equivalent of uh, was it Seven Samurai or Magnificent Seven? Like we, you know, us men, we get that remade for us every now and again, and it's the same story. It's not a great story. Ends exactly the same way every single time. But yeah, you know, it's what we have. We pretend we like it. We kind of like it. It's okay. It's never great, is it? Um, yeah. So it's about. <laughs> In this one, it was it was Bradley Cooper is a nondescript popularity country singer. He's either massive or quite big. It's very hard to tell because like they they show like at one point he sends a private jet for someone, so you think okay that's that's pretty big, and then you see his concerts and that, and you think well they're big, but they're not like they're not massive. They're not they're not huge. They're just big for the most part. And then there's other stuff like you see his. Uh, like his home and, and such, and you think it's a fairly nice home, but it's not a, it's not something you'd see on on cribs, MTV's cribs. So it's it's kind of hard to tell that he inexplicably, well not inexplicably, he falls in love with Lady Gaga early on. There's like a kind of plot of oh I'm too embarrassed to sing my own songs because of the way I look, and the thing is I was looking at her, I was like. Is this film trying to convince me that Lady Gaga is not good looking? Because the thing, like, if on a, on a scale of one to ten, she's not a ten, fair enough, but she's not a one, is she? It's like, it's like she, I would say moderately attractive. I don't think anyone's looking at her and saying ugly. You could maybe go with plain, but like. She's got a good body. She has a slightly big nose, but not massive. <laughs> to the point where, like, in, in the trailers for the film, I was like, is she supposed to be bad looking? I don't, I don't understand it. I now see where this goes as well. It was quite obvious. Um, and this just goes back on top. Right. Okay, that's good. That's, that's an acceptable lot amount of stuff left over now. So the, the the whole film was like, she she gets she gets big suddenly as a pop star, slightly thanks to him, but she's also a really good singer, and he he's he's a drunk, and an, a drug addict, and it seems to be because he has tinnitus. Which, as someone who has tinnitus, I don't. It's not. It's not that bad. You can you can live with it. This is not going on. I wonder why. Maybe if I can try again on the other side, it'll be easier. Then it blinds, just assuming what I need is there. Okay, I mean, that went on fairly well, but it's not really on. Also, a bit definitely fell off. I'm pretty sure you saw that. I'm going to leave these again for another time. Got the excitement now of opening a new bag. <gasps> Penultimate bag. Emotional moment. Bag 16. It's the one that gives us hand solo. Quite a big bag. Also, I need this bit. And a bit which is so it's it's in its own bag within its own bag. Oh, this bag is horrible. It's perforated. I presume they put this one in its own bag so it doesn't get scratched. Uh, 
put them to the side for now. Should clear these up really, but I'll just put them in a pile, worry about that later. That's more worrying. over here. A lot of small bits in this one. It's, um, in fact, it's nearly all small bits. Let's just say that's a side. Right, so there should be Han Solo with a gun and grey hair and Ray, who I for some reason wanted to call Lana Del Rey, even though that's not her name. Does she have a last name? I mean, I know it's a whole point where you don't, you don't know who her parents are, but I'm trying to think, does she even have a last name? No, I'm, I'm getting nothing on that in my memory. Legs. It's always legs that are hard to find. Yeah. So, and then, so Star is born. Her, her star's rise, and he's a drug addict. He goes into rehab. Then he shoots himself. That's pretty much it. So, no, he doesn't shoot himself, so he hangs himself after he gives his dog a steak. I was watching it, I was like... Really? Is that? I was like, this the, I, I'm not really feeling this. It, it what the the song the songs were okay, but not great. There was, I'd say there was one that was particularly good, which they did play once or twice. It's in the trailer, but I was I was not feeling it. Like there was, it was clearly not for me as a film. I could I could hear a few people sort of weeping at the end, and I was like, That's, okay, fair enough. Wasn't that sad though? I'll tell you what it was. It's because they never had like that many scenes together where they were just like happy and in love. A lot of it was when they first meet, yeah, seems like they, they like each other. And then a lot of stuff after that was like almost a codependence. Like they they like that, you know, he's he's drunk and can't get it together or or you know, he's helping her out. But it, it's very rare like you see him like happy. It's 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 like one of them where Probably for the best that you don't stay together. You're, you're, de it's, you, you're not good for each other. I mean, she, t in many ways, she drove him to suicide. Again. MVP of that film, though, was Sam Elliott. No one deserves an Oscar for that film. It's not, it's not an Oscar-worthy film, definitely. Particularly not Lady Gaga, who honestly can't act. That was probably the worst part of it. She's not... I just never bought it. I never bought that she was angry with him, like... Like if on the emotional scale, like she could, she could just go up and down a little bit. You need to be able to, you know, go ten and minus ten. She was at, she was stuck at two and minus two. Right. I should give up on finding the legs for these characters, but I have got most of them. Wait. Ah, yes. See, the mistake was I assume they both had black legs. Only one of them has black legs. Doesn't help. I, I, I should have found one. Beige legs, where are you? They'll turn up. They'll turn up. I'll find them. That'll be exciting when they do. It'll be a moment of wonder. Okay. Making the cockpit. It's a fun word. The critics gave it 5 out of 10. I would give it 2 to 3 out of 10. I was, I was not sold on it whatsoever. And I, I feel that history will back me up on that. And in, in time, I will, the, the opinion of that will spread. Like now, the current opinion is up here, but I feel, give it, give it a, a couple of years and it'll be, it will like sink down to here. Even faster if it does win any big awards. I can see it maybe winning something for music, but I can't, I can't think what else has, has done well musically. Which brings us on to the other film, Venom. 
Christ, what a film, Venom. I was, I was looking forward to Venom for all the wrong reasons. And I, I'm genuinely sure that like the rest of the, the, the rest of the, the rest of humanity, let's not oversell this, was, had the exact same opinion going into Venom of this is going to be terrible. We're all going to watch it and we're all going to laugh at how bad it's going to be. So we all went in with zero expectations and uh, it's good, actually. <laughs> I enjoyed it. I was, I was watching it thinking, yeah, this is going to be terrible. This will be awful. And then like sort of 20 minutes in, I was like, yeah, it's pretty good, actually. <laughs> I, I'm, now, I'm now conflicted as to whether or not it's because it's, it is like actually enjoyable. I, I don't like using the word good around it. Or if it's because I had such low expectations that, you know, getting anything out of it is a bonus. It's the, it's, it's very confusing. It makes, it makes me want to take like someone who has never heard of it and knows nothing to see it. And then also, also big it up to someone massively, take both those people and see what they thought. But also they have to be twins with the exact same upbringing and generalness. They need to be as similar as possible. Or maybe take like two groups of a thousand people, both filling those categories. I need, I need to do rigorous scientific study on this to find out is is it a good film or not? Because the track, like my opinion, is tainted. Basically, doesn't matter. The special effects, well, they weren't, they weren't good, but but they were, they were kind of. Not different, but it's just not something. Yeah, he—he's not a robot. I've seen a lot of robots. Uh, it wasn't—it wasn't overly lame. Had the benefit of because any time he's like in the full Venom suit, it's like it's all black. It's got a good look to it. It doesn't. There's no uncanny valley issues because he doesn't have a face. It's, Tom Hardy was great in it. The supporting cast was there didn't really do anything they didn't need to exist I spent a, a good amount of the film thinking so the main villain is that is that Carnage I I don't actually know a lot about Venom as a character my, my entire Venom knowledge is this everything that's been in any Spider-Man cartoon which always gives a conflicting account of Venom uh, I suppose probably the best candidate would be the 90s uh, Spider-Man, the animated series. I think that's what it was called. Set in the uh, the Fox Marvel universe. I think that's what it was called. What? I'm doing. I'm I'm building this blind. I'm not picking the pieces out. It's a huge risk because I've just started a new bag. Possible my stomach rumbling just just came out on the microphone. Code for I haven't had breakfast yet. It's quite early in the day. It's not early. It's eleven. Um, yeah, so it, it, in in that series, it's like the classic Spider-Man. Uh, a shuttle comes down with Jameson's son on it, which seems to be a bit that the Venom film picked up on as needing to be like a crucial factor, even though he's never heard from again, and you don't see Jameson. It's it's almost like they, they like they had a big handful of things from the comics they were allowed to use in this film and stuff they weren't, and it's like. We've got to use everything we can because the stuff we can't use is so massive and so, and so obviously missing. Spider-Man being a big factor. So, so yeah, shuttle crashes, Spider-Man saves it. The symbiote is kind of somewhere there and it gets on Spider-Man, becomes his, he has it as a black suit for a while, it makes him really strong and then, it, then he realises it's making him into a dick because it, kind of amplifies your 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 badness. So when when Spider-Man had it, it it's not that big a deal because he's kind of a good guy. And then it it went to Eddie Brock, who at the same time had sort of absorbed a, a deep hatred of Spider-Man. So that's so when he becomes Venom, that that's why he's got like all of Spider-Man's sort of abilities and look, like the webbing and all that. Have I made this right? I feel like I've skipped steps but seems correct I'll have to assume it's correct 
There's no way I'm reading the instructions again. So that's like the, the rough history of Venom. I, I, I assume that's where they were kind of basing it off of. Um, so in this, he is, he is an alien. They, except he didn't, he didn't like stow away. They, they sent a, sh a ship with a crew, because Jameson was on it, to somewhere. And on that somewhere, they took specimens of venoms, of sim symbiotes or symbiotes. Apparently, there's a big thing on Twitter about how to pronounce that word. I have, I don't care. Either way is fine to me. I don't, I don't get any issues with that. But I'm, I'm like that with most word pronunciation. It's, it's fine. Do whatever. I know what you're on about. There's no, there's no ambiguity. Um, yeah, they, se they send it somewhere to get these. It's unclear. It's strongly implied that, that wherever they sent them to get them, it, that was the plan. Um, it, it actually, it's kind of a big plot hole of the film, actually, because you think initially like it's somewhere like Mars, because the whole plan of this evil company is to colonise another world eventually. And so you think... Mars is logical because you can get there. And then you think, well, where did they get these things from? How far did they go? Because it's got to be pretty far because apparently there's a planet of them or several planets of them. But then it was a manned ship they sent because Jameson was on it. They were very specific about that. Um, so there's a, there's a bit of an issue there that occurs about 30 seconds in and... Oh, I found Ray's legs. Nice. Behold. Uh, yeah, there's a bit bit of an issue there. It doesn't um, doesn't do much to to ever go into more detail about that. So there's, I think there were. I want to say there were six sym symbiotes on there, on the ship. And like one of them escapes on the body of an astronaut who wasn't dead, and it and it kind of like jumps between hosts. And the way the symbiotes work is, they can't survive in our atmosphere for very long, so they need a host to to meld with. It's unclear how long they can survive for, and quite what they can do without a host. And then on the other side of that. Compatibility with hosts is a factor. So sometimes, like, they'll if they get full compatibility with a host, like a hundred percent, they they uh, they like it, I think, and they they won't kill the host, or or they won't quickly kill the host. It's unclear. There's there's a certain amount of killing of the host, but it's it's hard to say, timescale wise. It doesn't matter if it's like a human or a rabbit or a dog or anything like that. Okay, but the one that escapes, it seems to me like he's jumping. He has to jump from host to host a lot to get to travel around, and also it seems like the ones he leaves behind are dying because they don't look overly healthy. That one is it's called Riot apparently, and I think he's in the comics. I assumed it was Carnage just because I only really know of two symbiotes, but it, it turns out there are more, so that's that's fine. That's my lack of knowledge there. That's on me. There we are. Get that in place. Where were we? Yeah. Also, like conversely, you've got Eddie Brock, in investigative reporter or journalist and they show this reel of like his show which I can't remember what it's called now it's something like the Brock report is it's something sort of dumb and and I feel like it's something that either exists in America or or they just make up for TV shows because it's it's not something I'm aware of in my country mainly because I I think most of our news comes from the BBC and it's like it's less Scandalous. We save that for print media, I suppose. Yeah, that might be it, or it might just be because I don't really read, read or watch news particularly. I just sort of absorb it through overhearing people in crowded places. That's 
that's how I get my political information, and it seems to seems to work out in my favour. But he, he has, like they show this reel, like this kind of montage of of like you know him him exposing stuff, but also doing some light entertainment stuff. So you see his like his sizzle reel of of everything he's done. And I, I genuinely at that point couldn't tell if he was supposed to be a good reporter or not good. And if like, it looked like all of his stuff was stuff that he'd made himself and was what he'd used like as his portfolio to get work. It, it didn't feel like he was, he was particularly good at it. It just, <laughs> it was confusing. And then it, it later turns out that, oh, he is good at it. And he's like, like he's, He's got, what's the word? Not ethics, but uh, I suppose ethics is the word. I don't know. He's a proper journalist. But it didn't, um, didn't overly come across in that sort of little sizzle reel. And essentially, a, a lot of nonsense happens just to lead up to him getting the symbiote. And then that's probably the best bit of the film is when he gets it and it's like... He's kind of not fully aware he has it, and the main thing it does is it makes him really hungry, <laughs> and he just he just starts eating rank food and stuff, and he goes a bit nuts. It's probably probably the best bit of the film is Venom itself, the symbiote, and then his, its relationship with with uh, Eddie Brock or Tom Hardy. Um, is very he's very much Tom Hardy in the film, which is a good thing because Tom Hardy's great. And it, it feels like they cut a lot of stuff out that would, would have been like a, more like a comedy, like a buddy cop sort of situation. Because um, there's a bit, it's like there's a, there's like a full act in the middle that almost doesn't exist where like they just meet and they're almost starting to get along and then they're ripped apart. Wait, no. Yeah, they, they meet and then they're ripped apart almost immediately, like a day later. And then Venom comes back to Eddie and he's like, yeah, I like you, Eddie, actually. We're kind of friends. You've, you've turned me around. I'm not going to kill everyone on this planet. I'm going to help you. And it feels like the, the, there was a bit in the middle that was missing where they, you know, they, they become friends or enjoy each other's company or, or anything like that. I'd like to have seen that bit. And then there's just a nonsense fight at the end. There's just a CGI fight between Venom and Riot, which means nothing. There's no, there's no people around. Right, I need a, need a little blue bit. But as a film, I was like, I, I want a sequel to this, or I, I want a version of events where somehow Tom Hardy as Venom appears elsewhere. Going back to my Venom knowledge, my main knowledge of, of that Venom comes from uh, from the from the TV series, as I said, and then. All of the other stuff I know about Venom is when Mac Gargan is the Scorpion, when he becomes the Venom, and and when he becomes Venom, because because he's like he's already super powered, like he becomes huge, and in that in that version, Venom's like a giant monster. Uh, but he's not really, he doesn't really hate Spider Man that much. He's just kind of a kind of an arsehole. He's part of Norman Osborn's Dark Avengers. That's, that's the main thing I remember about him. That's actually a really, it's a really good comic, Norman Os Osborn and his Dark Avengers. He, he essentially sets out to make a team that are, that are just ascent like versions of them. So he's like, well, we need a Wolverine because there was a Wolverine on the Avengers. So it's like they get Wolverine's son, the Ken. He's like, be like Wolverine. We need a Hawkeye for some reason, so they get Bullseye and give him a bow and arrow. <laughs> and they're like, we need a Spider-Man. And they, they find Venom. They inject him with something that makes him small and tight, so he can be like Spider-Man, even though he likes to eat people. Uh, and then he's like, we, we need a god. And they're like, but no gods will work with us. And he's like, I've got an idea. And they get Ares, the god of war. It feels decidedly less godlike than uh, than four, the one they were replacing. 
and then at the very end they're like that's good we've got basically everything we need but we need like we need something a bit like captain america and someone like iron man as well <laughs> and fucking norman osborne's like hold my beer and the next time you see him is like at the big reveal and it's just him as the iron patriot and it's like just slam the two ideas together cool armor though something i like about that the marvel films like there's there's no way they, they'll ever get to a place where they can do a Dark Avengers, Norman Osborn, Iron Patriot storyline. So they just painted War Machine as the Iron Patriot for, for uh, Iron Man 3. I was like, yeah, I'll do. <laughs> That's enough. We just, get, we just want the cool armour in there, really. We don't need all the rest. And then on the downside of that, you have, uh, you have like no chance of getting a proper Planet Hulk film now because they've already done Sakaar. They've done Hulk as a gladiator on his own. They've had the war bound in there. So, uh, it was never going to happen anyway, but it's a good storyline that we can't have now. Who knows? Maybe we'll, maybe we'll get a World War Hulk somehow. World War Hulk is such a dumb storyline, but I love it. Just the tagline of the stronger Hulk gets, the, uh, sorry, the madder Hulk gets, the stronger he becomes. And he's never been madder. So, oh yeah, it's going to be a fight. A fight in which you're rooting for the Hulk, weirdly. <laughs> he's definitely the, the villain of the piece, but at the same time, it's like, he's got a solid point. He's only really going after the heroes in this, and they weren't the heroes. <sighs> Such a great run of comics, i.e. the run of comics that I read. <laughs> I had I had to give up on reading comic books. I was, it was a... Uh, a destructive hobby for me as in i i just i'd read far too many I, I'd, I'd knock out like 30 in a day and just end up consuming it um i need two little little gray squares where would they be i made a huge error when i opened all these bags i didn't have any kind of logic to it i've got like small medium large small small it should be Small over here, medium here, large here. That's the system. Now anything can be anywhere, particularly because I've kind of mushed them together a bit. It's not over here. Is it in here? It's not in here. It's too, it's too big for this bit. I'm not seeing it here. It makes me think it's somewhere I'm not looking. Maybe it was back over here. I think what it is, is there's not many of these pieces I need, so it's going to be difficult to find. What if I skip ahead? Okay, well, it's not really skipping ahead, it's just putting these together. I'll definitely forget if I don't look now, though. Overall, it, so I want a sequel to Venom. They teased the sequel at the end where, with Carnage, where they, they meet Cletus... Cassidy, is that his name? The guy who would become Carnage. Played by Woody Harrelson. Like, that was that was a get, wasn't it? I was like, oh yeah, I can see that. I can also easily see this version of Venom coming into the Marvel Cinematic Universe without too much difficulty. Like, no, none of the like other background stuff. Just, just the character. Retcon, retcon him a bit if you want. Um, right, so this goes like this. What the hell am I even making here? This this must be all stuff that you can't actually see because I feel nothing on the Falcon looks like this. And now I'm now I'm putting like computer components on. I think right? these are specially pre-painted blocks that when you learn of their existence, you wonder why you ever have to put stickers on when they can give just give you pre-painted blocks. Oh, it's the most hideous color green piece there. That's just, it's like, that's illness green is what that is. That's a, a color of green that only, only comes into existence because of an illness. I'm not saying, I'm not spe specifying snot, vomit, or a certain kind of shit. But, you know, it's one of those, certainly, if, if not a combination. 
I don't, I don't even know where to begin to look for this piece I need. It's tiny as well. That's half of, half the battle. I'm just, I'm gonna have to gonna have to start sorting things. And that's what I'm gonna have to do. Also, I definitely opened the bag of small stuff on a bag of leftover stuff from the last last section, which was an error. And I now realise why I've been putting stuff to the side previously. Okay, it's n it's not over here. I can I can see that being a case. Is it over here? Could be. Ah, ha ha, got it. But I need two of them. But the one, once you've found one, you know, you, you know roughly where the other one will be, and I got it. Okay, these are not reversible, so I need to get them in in the right location because I feel they will be visible. On another note, I've started watching The Good Place, which is a TV series. I knew, I knew very little about it, other than I hear people saying it's good, which is always a good sign, and it's by Michael Schur, the same guy that does, like, did Parks and Rec, and I think he wrote The Office, or he was, he was, he was like, bigly, bigly involved in those, and now he's more involved with this. He plays Moe's as well, so he's very funny looking when he's dressed as Moe's. I think he just look, looks like a normal guy otherwise. Um, so I've, I've been watching that. I just I just got through the first series and like, it was a good show. And then in like the last two episodes of that, you're like, damn, there's a, I mean, I'm, without spoiling it, there is a twist that you don't see coming. And it's like, wow, game changer. It's almost enough to immediately make you want to rewatch the whole first series. I didn't know. Because there's a second series which I immediately started watching. I was like, "You gonna, you gonna leave me with that?" Oh. Uh, that's the timer, but I'll go on for a bit longer because I want to finish this sort of page at the very least. And the bit I oh, there it is. The big piece. That's a good sign, especially because I need two of them. Should be there. It is. Yeah, the, it's it's a really good show. Annoyingly, like every episode, it doesn't end on a. It's kind of a cliffhanger. It ends, it ends on a. Well, I now need to watch the next episode. Is what it ends on. It's the sort of show I could easily have seen myself had I not gone through so much of it, watching um, watching like about an episode a night, but half of one episode and the other half of another episode, as opposed to a whole episode, which is what I do with a lot of like the Marvel. Uh, Netflix shows because they're not great, but yeah, you know, they're all right. But if you watch them like that, they the the episoding makes much more sense. You want to stop watching when it's slow. That's the key to getting a lot of sleep. Wait, hang on. Why did I pick these up? Shit, did I not put these on? I didn't. See, that's, that's the benefit of, of getting all the pieces first. If suddenly there's pieces in front of you, you know you've forgotten to put them on. Now, where does this go? Um, uh, right. There's, there's just a rod. It doesn't tell me where to put it. It's not. It's not in the picture. <laughs> ah, right. Yeah, that's because it's not telling me. To, it's not in this step. It's in the next step. But it's they put like a little um, scale drawing of it on here, so you don't get the wrong one. And it made me get the wrong one, weirdly, because I'm an idiot. I'm starting to get that kind of. I'm hungry, fatigue setting in. My um, so I was before I was doing that eight sixteen dieting thing, which I'm still doing. I don't know why I said like said it like I've stopped. I'm still doing that. Um, although I've taken, I'm a bit, I'm a bit lighter on it. I'm less strict with it. I'm still doing it though. You hear me? I'm still doing it. Don't don't take it away from me. Um, but I've also started doing. Fuel, 
uh, which is a food replacement powder drink, I don't know, milkshake. It's kind of like a milkshake. It's mainly oatmeal and some other stuff. Apparently you, you can live off it if you want. But I do that for like a good amount of my meal. I'd say maybe half my meals. So I'm down to one solid meal a day normally, which Christ you look forward to. It's it's not bad stuff to be fair. The, I, I genuinely like the taste of it. I think the reason I like the taste of it specifically is because I don't, I don't really have, I, I only, I only really drink like water generally. I don't have any sweet drinks in my life like Coke or anything. So this, this milkshake powder, it's vanilla flavor, and it's, it's slightly sweet. I think if you were used to sugary drinks in any way, you'd drink it and think that that's no, no flavor. Because, but because my palate for that is so bland, it's like. Oh, this is it's almost too sweet for me. I might need to get the unsweetened version. Um, and then you read reviews online and you see people saying, oh, it tastes like ass," And I'm thinking, my, my palate must be just more, even more bland than yours or less destroyed than yours. I, I feel like going towards the more less destroyed part just because it makes me feel superior. I don't need a complex flavour. I'll just, I'll just take my uh, plain vanilla. It's also it it gives you a certain smugness when like I don't know if I want to make a, a a packed lunch for the day instead of having to do anything, I can just dump a scoop of powder in a in a bottle and just like yep, make that at work. That's fine. I just need to add water. It's easy. And it's genuinely filling as well. Very confusing. Just you have one drink and you're like, oh, I couldn't eat anything. Uh, put that there. And it's not for me. It's not so much about the weight loss. It's just it's it's the healthy aspect is what I'm going for. Want to live to be a thousand. What was it? Chris Traeger's aiming for. It's, he wants to live to be, I can't remember what age it was. Was it a thousand or was it like 200 years old? He, he was aiming for a lot, wasn't he? I did re read a theory by a professor that the, uh, the first thousand year old humans have already been born. The logic being was that we're, we're getting towards technology that will essentially rejuvenate you and make you younger. So those thousand year old humans, those ones that have been born, they can get to like the age of 70, suddenly hit this technology and be reset back to like 40. And then the technology suddenly gets better and better. So they, you know, they, they've got the potential there to get, to get up to the old high numbers. I'm not sure if the brain can cope with getting that old. I should really stop. I'm I'm definitely over time, aren't I? But also, is it a good point to stop at? You know what? I will stop because I've got this nonsense here. I've got to attach these things on the end somehow. Don't know how that's going to work. I still haven't found Han Solo's legs, which, by all accounts, should have turned up like way sooner rays just sort of fell at me maybe they're not in here my immediate assumption every time something something's missing they must have screwed me lego has screwed me and then it turns out you know you, you dropped it it's it's on camera ah oh, there they are gone right good now i can finish i can finish happy i've got I've got hand solo's legs they're not entirely black actually they've got a bit of his bandolier but what if i could find his gun as well that should be easy because it will be here it is actually this is Ray's gun it's a small gray kind of revolver I think it's more reminiscent of the one she got whereas Han Solo's gun I'm not sure if this is the case but I feel like all black Lego guns are actually based off his gun I was kind of it's got a bit of a scope on it has on, on it and it's sort of squarey with a longer barrel that's that's my kind of memory of it it's not an overly cool gun, but because it's in Han Solo's hands, it becomes iconic. 
Okay, it's, it's not there, but I have found another revolver, so he can he can have that. I'm now, have I made that up? No, no, because look, Finn has got a gun like that. I mean, you can't see it, but he's got it. I'll worry about that later. I've got, I've got reams of Lego guns. For, I, have, I can give him a lightsaber, actually. That's what I'll do. There we go. Ray now has a lightsaber. Granted, it does. It's not. It's not lit up. I couldn't find the laser part of it. Is it a laser? Have I got one? Huh. I haven't got a laser. All I've got is uh, those. That doesn't work. That's nothing. Well, that that's fine. She's she's got a gun. She's got a lightsaber. She's basically unbeatable at this point. She's Kyle Katarn. Is who she is. Uh, right, let's just leave this piled up over here, that over there. So, uh, yep, yeah, thanks for watching this very disjointed episode. Go and watch Venom. I'll see you next time.